This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Jason Thane about building a values-based organization and culture. Jason Thane, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have this conversation today. We've been uh, building up to this uh, and, you know, we've been preparing and it's going to be a a fun discussion. Uh, Today, we're going to be focusing on building a values-based organization and culture. And I know this is uh, really the focus of what you do in your organization and you have so much expertise and uh, insights to share around this, you know, and related topics. Uh, So I'm excited to have the conversation. As we get started, I just wanted to share Jason's bio with everyone. Jason Thane is co-founder of Seattle-based engineering and software development firm, GenUI. Thane also uh, has brought over 50 software products from concept to market with a passion for organizational development and creating values-based cultures built upon highly collaborative and diversified teams. So, so important, and I'm super excited to have the chance to learn more about what you're doing at your firm uh, and what you're doing uh, in your experience in in bringing these products to market and all the the stuff related to that. As we get started, uh, Jason, anything else that you would like to share by way of personal background, context, anything that would help frame the discussion for today? Thanks so much, Jonathan. That's a really kind introduction. And um, So yeah, as uh, you mentioned, we are a digital innovation consulting firm. We're based in Seattle, and we help clients accelerate technology roadmaps by bringing, um, designing and building software products for them and helping them bring those to market. And so, um, as you mentioned, um, you know, a core focus of mine has been, um, you know, building a values-based organization at NUI. It's proved to be a really effective tool. Um, for building the structure of our organization and the culture that scales. Um, But, you know, my background previous to that was as a software product manager and a software engineer. So that's my core. And um, in, um, you know, my current job as leader of the company, um, you know, I'm really focusing on uh, on non-engineering objectives like this. And so it's been a very... uh, uh, a, a very interesting process to, um, you know, build and support, um, you know, this, this part of the company and, uh, you know, very different, uh, different kind of role that I started out in early in my career, but I've been, been doing this for 11 years and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's really a privilege to work with the fantastic team of people that we've got um, at the company and values are how we, uh, you know, tie it all together. Um, that's, that's how we know who the right people are. And that's how we know um, that we're, all moving in the same direction. Yeah, so I mean, you just started to, to get at what my first question was gonna be, and that is why is it important? Like, why, why does it matter that we have a values-based organization? And how do we even determine like what those values should be and how we start to integrate them into the organization? So what we do is knowledge work. And so it requires a great deal of, um, freedom it requires a great deal of support from management rather than the sort of command and control authoritarian hierarchy in the company that won't work at all for what we do in the knowledge economy instead you have to support 
wonderful employees and being the best that they can be in, and uh, in moving the company forward, uh, making their own decisions constantly. And so um, because there's such freedom required, um, it is important to align everybody's efforts. If you completely uh, have uh, free reign you know, at every level of the organization, there's no alignment. <clears throat> People end up moving in opposite directions. And in particular, um, you know, everything we do in, in business and in, in our professional lives is an optimization. We're optimizing for something over something else. And so when you choose one thing over another, that shows your values. And by uh, creating an alignment in values, we're collecting a group of people together who are likely to choose the same thing in the optimization over the other thing. Um, and if you don't do that, um, you can have some people optimizing for speed, other people optimizing for cost, um, other people optimizing for quality. And eventually, those people will disagree so much that nothing will get done and the organization can grind to a halt. Um, so by creating the conversation um, and facilitating as a leader this conversation about values, um, we're able to create alignment in what we do. There's a shared understanding in the organization this is what drives business success, the fact that we're all optimizing in this direction. Um, the fact that we all make the same kind of decision, those decisions tend to support the decisions of others within the organization. So that, that's really, um, you know, that's a pretty key uh, route for us in creating, you know, business success and really, again, in creating the, the scalability um, so that we can be a bigger group um, and do more, get more done um, when we're working in alignment because we don't sort of trip over one another on the way. So an example of this, our, our most, most core value um, is, uh, so we sort of say it is don't go it alone. Um, this is a, a, a belief in togetherness as the key to innovation. And that uh, really it's, it's sort of like in contrast to the opposite as all good values should be. The opposite is to try to innovate by yourself. To try to go off in a dark cave and create something fantastic and then bring it into the world. Um, that's really not the model for innovation that's going to create the future. Um, it, it really is a collaborative effort because truly innovative software products, truly innovative business models have to be created in close uh, communication and contact with the outside environment. Um, you know, they have to take in many, many touch points, many, many integration points into account and really be, um, be a function of their environment just, just as much as any organism would be. So, um, you know, we really believe that, uh, you know, our, our core value is that we want to do it together, that we believe that success comes from doing it together rather than doing it alone. And, um, you know, it's, it just becomes very obvious when we interview somebody for a position, for example, we can tell um, if they're the kind of person who wants to say, okay, I've got the great idea, leave me alone for a week or two weeks or a month and I'll go create it and then I'll bring it back and it's gonna be amazing. Some people really have that opposite sort of value system and we know right away when we meet that sort of person, um, that's not, you know, they're not likely to be successful at our firm. They're not likely to work in alignment with the rest of the team. Yeah, that's a great example. I appreciate the, the context and the background behind what you're doing at your organization in terms of trying to create that values-based culture and the types of values that matter to you. What, what are some other examples that you've seen out there, either in your industry or other, uh, other types of organizations where they've just really demonstrated a strong, um, healthy organizational culture built on core values? Yeah, you know, um... We drew a lot of inspiration from, uh, of course, the Amazon set of values. Uh, there's another consulting company called Small in here town and globally that uh, has a very strong set of values. Um, part of what was inspiring about those is that they're written in a way that um, commands a decision. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, our core values don't go alone. Or we have another one called uh, Measure What Matters. Um, they they are expressed in such a way that that uh inspires um somebody listening to choose one thing over another to actually take and direct action and i think that some organizations um you know create a value system in sort of lofty manner and they sort of say you know they might say collaboration or that's a um 
you know, that's our value. We, we value collaboration. We value business success. Well, of course, everybody values business success. This does not command a decision or drive an optimization, um, you know, and especially not in contrast to, to something else. And so, um, yeah, those, those organizations I mentioned have strong value systems that are expressed that way. They're expressed to, um, you know, choose this and not that. And that's why we're successful. That's what drives business success. You know, um, Amazon's uh, example of customer obsession is a great one. Um, they, they really, you know, it commands the team at Amazon, everybody building their products to obsess about the customer and to really, really think about them constantly and drive, um, you know, the customer's well-being and success in every decision that's made um, at Amazon. So that's a, that, they're a great example. Yeah, I, there are so many really great examples in tech companies. Um, you know, we, we often will talk about the Amazons, the Googles, the SaaS um, organizations, the uh, Netflix and, and various uh, companies like that, that, that do yeah. a lot of really cool things. Um, and I think one, one of the things that I think is so vital to all of this is recognizing that each organization has their own unique identity their own unique values and culture. Um, sometimes I, it, it's, I find it kind of humorous almost, it's humorous and sad. You know, organizations will look to, for example, a Google or an Amazon and they, they see that, that great success. And so they decide we're going to mimic and, and do what Amazon has done or, or we're going to do, you know, yeah. mimic the values of Google. Uh, and then they try to adopt that culture and to replicate it in their own organization. And usually that doesn't work, even yeah. e even though even though they see those same values, they're like, oh, we, we you know we also care about those same things. But why doesn't that work? And then what? So if it doesn't work to just replicate what someone else has done, you know, where they've you know kind of found the the secret sauce that works for them, if that's not going to work for us, like what? How do we start that process to figure out what our values are and how we're going to start implementing them? Yeah, the thing about values is they really are part of the structure of the organization as its own unique organism. And if you um, if you try to go out uh, and take uh, Netflix's values, for example, they have some really weird ones. Uh, I don't know if uh, you've read the the recent book by Reed Hastings about about Netflix, but uh, they do some things that are pretty bizarre and would cause absolute chaos and destruction in many other companies, like such as such as my company, for example. And uh, uh, you know, I think that the key is um, that values actually are a part of the, the business process and the way the business flows through the organization, the way that value is created and delivered. Um, and, uh, you know, transplanting, you know, somebody else's organ <laughs> into your uh, organism, um, you know, may not work at all. Um, and as a leader, it's uh, crucially important to remember that your job is not to tell the organization what the value should be. In fact, if you do that, you're likely to sort of bring some of your own beliefs and own values, which may not be validated in the business context um, and uh, sort of clobber the real values of the organization. Instead, what you need to do is um, research and curate and understand what the values are that already exist in the organization that are making it successful. And there's a little trick you can do to do this. Um, it's best to do it as a leadership team rather than an individual leader. And that is to get together and think about some of the key people in the organization who have just been the most impactful, have created the most value, have led the organization forward. And then to think about what it is about that person that really leads their them to success or really drives their success in their position. Um, if, for example, that person has a fantastic sort of business backbone and they understand the process and the rules that we need to stick to in order to, to make our, our company very valuable and relevant to our customers, um, then that's, that's an example of a quality in that person that may evidence the value that's behind it. And in fact, that's... Um, that's exactly what we did in putting together the, the list. And in doing so, you know, we came up with things that I, I certainly would not have known of or had it, I would have expressed that way. We really got it by um, thinking hard about who we are and who the people are who are really impactful for our business, drawing that out, uh, expressing it as a value, and then helping to spread that to others within the organization.
Yeah, that's that's really great. Um, I, I it's so tempting to want to go and just find you know find the, those case studies that are successful and then just try to replicate and adopt everything that they did. But to the point, all the points that you've made, it's just not that easy. And it, yeah. there's no there's no shortcut. Like that's the point. Even if yeah. you end even if you end up with all the same core values that an Amazon or a Google has, or you want to adopt and, and replicate their business model, even if you end up in that place, you have to go through the process of right. having those conversations and, and generating the buy-in and making sure everyone's on the same page. And that just doesn't happen. Um, yeah, if you don't you know, go through the process, you're not going to really understand them. You're not really going to understand what they mean. And in the case of all of our uh, values that we've chosen, um, you know, we have a whole story about how we got there, and all the things we did that weren't bad in the past, and then how we realized um, that this is the right choice to drive business success at our company. Um, you know, it's it's a whole historical narrative. If you if you just sort of parrot it from somebody else, I, I mean, it's it's not going to stick. You know, you know, everybody will forget about it because it's not sort of um, drawn up out of these stories of what's happened in the business and what's what's made this successful. Yeah, absolutely. So so what are some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen organizations make when they're trying to, you know, they, they recognize the need, the importance, and they, and they want to adopt more of a values-based culture, but that's not easy. You know, it's hard work. So what, and, and people, even with the best of intentions, are going to end up, you know, stepping in it and, and uh, you know, doing things that are actually counterproductive or undermine their own efforts. So what are some of those types of mistakes you've seen in the past and how can organizations yeah. overcome uh, those? Or what we've seen or what we've, what, what I've made, mistakes I've made in the past, you know, um, I think, um, you know, what we just talked about probably the biggest one of, you know, the need to really enroll everybody and have this sort of, um, you know, discovery process throughout the, the entire organization. Um, you know, if you don't do that, if you don't really hear from everybody in the process, you're going to miss um, the things that are actually working. Um, you really have to take a take a hard look at uh, at what the company is that's making it work. And even if you're a startup, even if you're a tiny company that's just started, even if it's just one person, um, you, you can still look at what is working, what is driving customer value, what is going to make the business case successful, and and pull out the values from that. And so. Um, I, I think that that's probably the biggest mistake leadership teams make is they sort of say, oh, this is what should be rather than, um, this is what is, you know, it kind of, it kind of plays to one of our, one of our values, which is to validate early and often. Whenever we build software or build a product, um, we validate that with the user as soon as we can. So we can see how they react to it. We can understand if it's working, if it's not working. Values are like that too. You really need to, rather than just sort of, Put them out there. You, you need to draw them out and validate that they are in fact successful, that they are in fact you know leading the company forward. So I'd say that's the first one. Um, you know, the second one I might say that um, I think a lot of people in values processes that I've seen will choose like really vague or general virtues um, instead of you know in, in doing that you're missing the opportunity to make the value very um, impactful by saying. Um, we choose this thing instead of its opposite. So we choose quality over speed, for example. Um, and uh, you know, if you just say, okay, we choose quality, great. But if you can really contrast that in, uh, you know, with with the alternative, that makes it capable of driving decisions. And it's really what you want out of the values process. You want it to be something that everybody can keep in their back pocket and say, okay, when faced with the choice. Um, I know that the company tends to choose this and that's what I'm going to do as well. Um, and then the third thing is like when, when values are written down, um, not writing them down in the imperative, like we really want an active verb in the value, create safety for others. That's one of our, one of our values. And that's, that shows people what you should do, not just what you should think, not just what you should believe. It's like, here's what we should do um, to make, make values real and make them, um, impactful in, in our business. Those are excellent, excellent thoughts and ideas. I, I'm wondering, you know, adding upon that, what uh, kind of mechanisms do organizations need to put in place 
to ensure that you know these efforts around uh, values-based culture creation can actually end up being sustainable. Like it'll actually stick, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and not not just be a passing fad, or just you know you, you know you have one particular leader who comes in and says, "I want it this way," and and they put some effort behind it for a while, and then their attention wanes and it goes somewhere else. You know, yeah. how, how do we make it stick? How do we make sustainable values-based cultures? Yeah, you, I mean, you want them to be alive, right? You want them to be a living being that is a part of your company. It's like, it's almost like another, you know, another person or another department of the company that's there and it's uh, it's involved in business and it's changing in, in response to that business. You know, you don't want to pivot so often that you, uh, you know, that they lose meaning. Um, that probably is a good sign that you chose the wrong values or ones that weren't real or authentic in the business in the first place. If, if they're just sort of a passing fad, yes, you make a poster, it goes up on the wall and then nobody ever thinks about it. That again is probably a sign that, um, you know, they, they weren't really the authentic values that are gone out of the, of the company that, that really drive business. But, um, you know, when, when the values are brought up in, um, everyday conversation, um, when people, you know, it, at our company, we really hear it a lot when we, we hear the word together. We say we're going to do it together. That plays back to that value. Of don't go alone. Don't don't go it alone, because that value is brought up out of um, the culture of the business and seen, you know, by everyone as something that does matter. Um, we hear it recurring over and over, um, and I think that's the case with all of them. You know, measuring what matters and validating early and often, creating safety for others, practicing empathy, um, and so on and so forth. There, they, all of these things come up in everyday conversation. And so I think our commitment to sort of recognizing when they do come up and just sort of putting a pin when, when the conversation turns to something that does reflect on, on the value just saying, oh yeah, that, that is one of our values. You know, that's something that we wrote down. There it is. And here's yet another example of how that matters to the company. Um, and I, I would also say that it's, you know, really important to use values when you hire. Um, I personally think that one of the best uses, at least for me in, in an interview, is to determine how many of the candidates' own core values happen to be consonant with the company's values. So if I'm interviewing a candidate and I, I can tell through the, the narratives that they're giving me about their past positions and what they're interested in, what their passions are, if I can tell that they like to practice empathy or create safety for others, for example, if they're very validation driven um, in their work, then I go, oh yeah, you know, we have the same values. And then I try to evidence some of the company's values to see if they respond to those. And, um, you know, if you can do that in, in an interview, that's probably the most, you know, um, effective way to apply the values. Because if you, if you bring people into the organization that already have these values, it's not, um, you know, hard at all to achieve alignment. If you bring people into the organization with opposite values or, you know, opposing values, they, they optimize away from everybody else. It's not going to be a fit. And so I think it's, it's really key to use them in interviews. Um, and then the last one I'd say is that um, using them in performance evaluations and to establish sort of the competencies that matter in uh, career paths within the company um, is really important. And so framing the, the performance evaluations around um, competencies that themselves are rooted in the values. Um, so what does, uh, you know, practicing empathy uh, mean? Well, it means we stay in relationship in our teams um, at one level, but maybe at a higher level of competency, it means we stay in relationship with our, our customers and our clients, or we stay in relationship with uh, people in the outside world. Um, and, and I think that that, uh, you know, just rooting all of the competencies that we evaluate in performance evaluations, um, rooting them in the values really helps to um, sort of embody them in the company. Excellent ideas. I mean, I, I think it, it's not rocket science, but it does take intentionality. It does take um, consistent effort. And you just outlined a whole bunch of ways that we can start to build those sustainability mechanisms um, so that we have a better chance of things taking hold. And ultimately, you know, if, if we have values and we care enough to start to go through this process, 
we don't want to be spend, spinning our wheels and putting all this effort and this time and this money behind stuff that's not going to stick, right? And, and so, we, and we want to leverage, we want to leverage those values um, to drive innovation and to drive success and engagement and, and motivation in our, our people and with, with our customers. And so, so it, all of this, you know, holistically, we bring it all together and that can start to create exceptional organizations that are ultimately going to um, drive better outcomes for the business, drive better outcomes for the individuals on your team. Uh, and it's, it's just a really great, uh, rich process to go through. And it's, and it's more fun. I mean, when you, uh, when you are singing a song and others uh, hum along, uh, you know, so it's way more fun. When people are pointing in the same direction and you uh, finish each other's uh, sentences and, and sandwiches and things like that. So that's, that's, that's the fun of it, you know, um, and, and it just removes so many impediments um, when um, people understand what the values are and understand the things that they're doing are likely to be recognized by their colleagues as moving us forward and, uh, and beneficial to the whole. Um, that's really what it's all about. So um, I, I see it as pretty key. Uh, to your point, it's not rocket science. It's the stuff everybody knows. Uh, hoping to share some like practical uh, uh, thoughts, you know, about how um, these actually uh, have been applied and, and, and can work and not work. Because it's, you know, in the abstract, it's easy to say, well, yeah, we want to be a values-based organization, but, um, you know, getting there is, uh, you know, there's some practical um, considerations to take into account. I think we've, we've touched on uh, a few of those. Well, Jason, I, I think we could go on and on because there's really, we've only scratched the surface and there's a lot more depth to all of the topics we've been discussing. Um, but I want to be respectful of your time. I know we're at the top of the hour and our time together is drawing um, short. But before we close today, and perhaps I can have you back on so we can continue the conversation later, um, I wanted to give you a chance to give the last word, to share with listeners how uh, they can get in touch with you, find out more about you and your business and, and uh, what you might be able to do for them. Uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about that with oh, us? Oh, thanks. That, that's very kind. You know, if there's anybody listening who wants to hear more stories about sort of how we got where we are with values and, and what the process was for, um, you know, creating them and, and aligning on them. Um, the values are, are that we have are posted on our website, uh, jimui.com slash about. Um, and you can go there and, and maybe receive some in, inspiration um, for uh, some things that may be valuable in your process. And if you do that, I would really love to hear from you. Anyone, um, you can email me directly, jason at jimui.com. Uh, and uh, I'd love to love to have a conversation with anybody listening um, that may be undergoing the same sort of process and may, may say, um, you know, hey, I thought of something interesting. Um, I, I certainly would love to hear uh, ideas from anyone as well as to share, um, you know, any uh, any aspects of our process that may be valuable to others. Excellent. Thank you, Jason. It really has been a pleasure, and I look forward to having a chance to talk to you again uh, soon. Uh, for now, I hope listeners will reach out to Jason, get connected, find out more about what he can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone will stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. 
We look forward to having you join us.